Hello and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, I would like to talk about BTS song Dionysus, focusing on the meaning of the song and on the reasons why it may be more important than expected in the map of the Soul trilogy and in the overall Bangtan universe plotline. Ever since Persona came out back in April, Dionysus has been a fan favorite, and judging by the way it was received, a lot of armies consider it a party song about drinking and having fun. This is true to an extent, of course, but as we'll soon see, Dionysus not only may hide some clues about the direction the trilogy is taking, but may also shed light on some aspects of the previous eras that might have been foreshadowing Map of the Soul all along. Before diving into the song, let's first take a look at the protagonist of this track, Dionysus himself. Dionysus is one of the twelve Olympians of the Pantheon, one of the strongest deities belonging to Greek mythology. Primarily known as the god of wine and fertility, Dionysus is also the god of ritual madness, religious ecstasy and theatre. Dionysus is the son of Zeus, and his mother, according to contrasting accounts, was either Persephone, the queen of the underworld, or Semele, a mortal woman Zeus fell in love with. The myths revolving around his birth are quite unique, because in spite of the identity of the mother, a detail that remains unchanged is that Hera, the wife of Zeus, tries to kill him before he is even born. In both versions, Zeus saves the baby by sewing it to his thigh, and because of that the god is called Dionysus, which means twice born. As the only god of the pantheon with a human parent, Dionysus was a very popular deity, and the origins of his cult are ancient and uncertain. Several sources tell us that he was not a Greek god, but a god of Asian origins that was later assimilated to Greek culture. His foreignness is an important part of his cults because he was also considered the god of Epiphany, which, as you may know, is a sudden and striking revelation that happens unexpectedly. As a god linked to harvest and fertility, his cult had very sexual and carnal overtones. During his religious festivals, the worshippers got closer to the god by intoxicating themselves, and music and dancing played an important role in their religious experience. The rituals dedicated to him were very theatrical, and were primarily aimed at the spiritual and physical awakening of the people involved. While he was originally portrayed as an adult male, the majority of his later iconography displays Dionysus as an androgynous boy with very delicate features. He is always depicted with a cup in his hand or carrying a tirsus, a wooden staff covered with ivy vines and topped with a pine cone. The Tirsus is an essential aspect of Dionysus' iconography and it symbolizes fertility, prosperity and pleasure. According to several Roman sources, the Tirsus was also a phallic symbol that was meant to highlight the god's sensuous nature, and the staff was thought to incite to madness whoever was touched by it. Like the other gods of the pantheon, Dionysus had also his sacred animals, the snake, the bull and the panther all creatures that the god was able to shapeshift into as well. The snake is a symbol of rebirth, transformation and fertility. The bull, which due to the shape of its horns is an animal that is connected to the power of the moon, symbolizes both the masculine and the feminine. While the panther, an animal whose name in Greek means all beast, highlights the universality of Dionysus as a god of all for all. In BTS Dionysus, all the elements I just mentioned are brought together in the song The Closest Persona, and if you think that this is random or that it doesn't have anything to do with Carl Jung's Map of the Soul, well, let's see if I can change your mind, shall we? The intro of the song gives us an overview of the imagery I just presented you. The boys are sipping wine, linking arms, they are gripping their tirses and eating their grapes. Everything is in line with the iconography linked to Dionysus, and the live performances are choreographed in a way that recalls the Dionysian festivals, which were gatherings organized in honor of the god, where the participants danced under the influence of alcohol. The choreography is frenetic and energetic. At the beginning, the boys are wearing traditional Greek robes, an outfit usually worn by the priests of Dionysus, and Aram is carrying the Tirsos, which makes him and the others the representatives of Dionysus on stage. The backup dancers in this scenario are meant to represent the worshippers of the god, who celebrate around the priests who carry the word of Dionysus. In the Speak Yourself tour, the song opens the concerts, and in the background they have two giant panthers. This is important because Dionysus is often portrayed riding the animal, so the appearance of the panthers suggests the arrival of the god and the beginning of the celebration. 
The first verse is sang by Aram, and here we get the first glimpse of the real meaning behind the song. Drink in one hand, thirsts on the other, art splashing inside this crystal clear cup. Art is alcohol too, if you can drink it, you'll get drunk like a fool. Aram here compares art to alcohol, which is something that falls perfectly in line with the Dionysian symbolism. As I mentioned earlier, Dionysus is the god of wine and pleasure, but also ritual madness, religious ecstasy, epiphany and theatre. These elements are part of a process that leads to the final purpose of the Dionysian cult, which is to free yourself from society. When you drink, you free your wild side, you become mad, so to speak, and through madness you get closer to Dionysus, which is what religious ecstasy is. This connection to the god enlightens you, it gives you an epiphany, and because of that you are born again as a free person. In Greek mythology and literature, one of the names of Dionysus is Eleutherios, which means the liberator, and this is also why he is the god of theatre. In Greek society, theatre was maybe the only institution where both the audience and the actors could escape real life. By putting on a mask, the actors could become whoever they liked. They freed themselves through art, which is exactly what RM is saying in the song. Art is like alcohol because it frees you. You can express yourself through it and show yourself for who you really are, and the song continues by developing this idea. The boys get drunk on their art. They drink and drink some more, then hit the gong and say on heya, which is an expression used in Korean folk music that represents happiness, meaning that through art they achieved a state of bliss, they had an epiphany, that connection with something bigger they were looking for. In the second verse, V and John Cook continue like this. I'm now in front of the door to the world, the cheers I hear when I get up on stage. Can't you see my stuck broken tears? At last I'm reborn. Here we see where their art led them. When they are on stage, they are on top of the world, armies with them and they hear you cheering. But there's also the stuck broken tears, which is meant to show that the artistic process is also full of failures. If the Tirsus is the symbol of the freeing power of Dionysus, BTS metaphorical Tirsus is their music. Through music, they free themselves and others from the constrictions of society, but this is not something that happens easily or naturally. There's work behind it, and the stuck broken Tirsus represents the pain and failures they had to face despite their success. This is also expressed in J-Hope's verse. Now, j -Hope's verse is very interesting because the way he describes their creative process mirrors the Dionysian festivals that inspired the live performances as well. The cult of Dionysus was linked to drunkenness and confusion. The intoxicated frenzy of the worshippers was meant to open their minds and free their true selves, and in the song the same thing happens when j -Hope describes their method of work. When they are working in the studio there's a lot of mumbling and tumbling. The atmosphere is hazy and confused because the artistic process is messy and the crazy artist is drunk on his art. When the night comes, the studio is filled by the sound of the bass drum that goes dum dum dum, and this mirrors exactly what happens in the cults of Dionysus because percussions were instruments sacred to the god and therefore used by his worshippers during their rituals. BTS creative process here is compared to a religious experience. If the worshippers of Dionysus get drunk on wine, BTS get drunk on art, but the final outcome is the same, freedom that leads to rebirth. This concept is also mentioned in Sugar's verse. Like Dionysus, BTS are born twice, once as idols and once as artists. Their commitment to their art brought them where they are now, and while difficult, the process is also intoxicating and liberating. Art freed them and empowered them. Now they can be whoever they want to be, but even if they have it all, they still want more. Sugar's verse here is about the addictive power of art and success. They are drunk on music, which is what they use to free themselves and others, but this process is not over. With nobody else to talk, their new record, Sugar says, is the fight against themselves. This brings us to the map of the soul concept and more specifically to the idea of identity. Now, the question of identity has been explored many many times throughout the years by BTS, and it is no secret that in the past the boy have had some issues in coming to terms with who they really are. Following Carl Jung's Map of the Soul, the Persona album is all about the contrast between their identities. It's about the difference between who they appear to be and who they really are, 
the relationship between masculinity and anima, as well as the contrast between their public identity and their private life. This idea is also evident in the concept photos, where they are either at home, in front of a mirror or posing for a photo shoot. The attention here is entirely focused on duality. The persona is a public version of yourself, it is as perfect as it can be, but it also hides something deeper, which is that side of yourself that you are the least proud of. In Jung's map of the soul, this side of yourself is called the shadow, which is an unconscious aspect of your personality that the ego does not identify in itself. The shadow embodies the primitive side of yourself, the part of you that is irrational and instinctive, and in Aram's intro this word appears coupled with persona and ego, thus suggesting that map of the soul persona will be followed by map of the soul shadow and eventually by map of the soul ego. This metaphysical journey that starts from persona, continues with shadow and ends with ego has been foreshadowed for a very long time, maybe even longer than what you would expect. As it often happens with BTS, in order to go forward we have to go back, so let's take a look at a few examples starting from the most recent ones. A few weeks ago I made a video about BTS' newest Japanese single, Lights, and in it I theorized that the music video is meant to be a sequel of Souls to Boy with Love. If in Boy with Love they are outside the Persona theater, in Lights they are inside the theater, which is something that hints at their intention to show us what happens behind the scenes, inside the Persona. This is also foreshadowed in RM's intro. In the lyrics he mentions his shadow, which is hesitation, a feeling that never fails to appear under the stage or the light, which is something we are also shown in Boy with Love. When Aram sings his verse, he is in the spotlight while performing on stage. That's his persona, because he looks exactly like he wants us to see him. He is handsome, elegant, confident, and everything feels right. In the corner, however, his reflection is in a cage, and this is a direct callback to his wing solo. In reflection, Aram says that when he looks at his reflection he hates himself, but also that he wants to be free. He wants to be free because he's trapped. Inside of him there's something that he doesn't accept that keeps him from loving himself, and that's literally what Jung's shadow is. This issue is later dealt with in the Love Yourself trilogy, but let's take a look at the reflection short film from the Wings era. Aram is trapped in a confined space, then he drinks and has a vision where he's able to break free. Aram here frees himself by drinking, and who is the god that frees people with alcohol? Well, Dionysus. Dionysus is important because it acts as a bridge between the persona and the shadow. Dionysus is a god that embodies the masculine and the feminine, the madness and ecstasy linked to the artistic process and a power that represents subversion. With wine and art, Dionysus liberates your deepest instincts and desires. He destroys the persona by freeing the shadow. As I said earlier, the shadow is the dark side of yourself, the part of your identity that you want to hide in contrast to the persona which is the part of you that you want to show. In Jung's map of the soul, this conflict is eventually resolved by the ego, which is the part of yourself that represents reason, the part whose task is to find a balance between the primitive aspect of your personality and the public version of yourself. Back in the Wings era, the contrast between good and bad was embodied by another god, Abraxas, which was heavily featured in the storyline. Much like what happened in Dionysus, the boys get in touch with Abraxas by drinking, and this is something that is shown in both the Korean and Japanese versions of Blood, Sweat and Tears. What is interesting here is that both Abraxas and Dionysus appear in the theories of Carl Jung. According to Jung, Abraxas is a central figure in the theory of individuation, that is the idea that everyone creates their own identity by developing out of the same unconscious. Abraxas creates truth and lies, good and evil, light and darkness at the same time. He is a force of chaos that Jung sees in a very negative light, but the BTS used not only in the Wings era, but to some extent in the Fake Love era as well. During the 2018 Melon Music Awards, the VCR that introduces their performance shows a mirror with an upside down message that says, I show you not only your true side, but also your fake side, which means that the mirror shows everything about you, both the fake things you want to show and the real things you are trying to hide. 
Mirrors literally force you to face yourself. They trigger self-awareness, which is the first step that leads you to individuation. In BTS videography, the mirror has always been an important aspect of their imagery. The members are shown kissing their reflection, studying it, hating it, even breaking inside of it, and these images are all symbols of hidden aspects of themselves. Whether it's vanity, self-hatred, self-reflection or psychological pain, the mirror shows what Abraxas represents, that is the chaos inside every one of us, the shadow that Dionysus frees with his power. In Jung's theories, Dionysus is associated with extraversion, which is a personality trait that makes you seek gratification from the outside world, and this makes sense because the cause of Dionysus revolved around social activities. Because of that, Dionysus is also linked to the persona, because that's the part of you that mostly interacts with the outside world. What is interesting here is that Dionysus, while being a symbol of the persona, is also the one to blame for its destruction. I think that in the light of what we've seen until now, the choice to end Map of the Soul persona with Dionysus is not random at all. The symbolism associated with the god makes him a figure that represents both persona and shadow. The song represents the connection between these two sides, and because of that, it closes persona by introducing shadow. I think the Map of the Soul shadow will be somehow connected to the Wings era and concept. Dionysus destroyed the persona and gave way to the shadow, thus freeing the chaos that Abraxas represents. So that's it for me today, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did or have any requests for future videos please let me know in the comments down below. If you like BTS and you are interested in videos like this one, I'm already planning other videos that may interest you, so please consider liking and subscribing. I'll see you next time, bye bye!